Welcome back. Today I'm going to read Lesson 3, The Qin and Han Dynasties. And we actually learned a lot about these people today in class when we were talking about the Great Wall of China. So let's get started on page 125. I'm going to turn this way. See my husband's cleaning car cleaning products in the background. Yeah, he likes to clean his car. So, all right, 125. Let's look at the terms to know. We have sensor, currency, civil service, tenant, farmer, acupuncture. A censor is an official who made sure that the government workers did their jobs. Currency is something that is used as money. The civil service is government work. A tenant farmer is a farmer who works land owned by someone else. And acupuncture is a Chinese practice of inserting fine needles through the skin to treat disease or relieve pain. So, let's look at our maps. On the left side, we have the Qin Empire, Qin Qin Qin, not Quin Quin Quin. And on the right side, we've got the Han Empire. Now, which one looks bigger? I think the Han Empire is a little bit bigger, right? Um, which one had more wall? Definitely the Han, but remember the Qin Empire only lasted for like 15 years. So the fact that the wall is this big... Even though, you know, it wasn't like a wall with like stones, but it was still like an earthen built thing. Um, that's a pretty large uh, amount of wall. Over a thousand miles of, of wall was built in just 15 years. Let's turn to page 126. Ready? The Qin Emperor. In 221 BC, the ruler of Chinese state of Qin took control of China and ended the Zhao dynasty. The new ruler called himself Qin Shi Hong Di, which means the first Qin emperor. Qin brought many changes to China. Qin wanted to unify China. He took control of China's provinces. Before then, the provinces were ruled by aristocrats. Remember from last episode, the aristocrats were the higher of people. The aristocrats passed control to their sons when they died. Instead, Qin now appointed the governors. Qin's rule was harsh. Anyone who disagreed with him was punished or killed. He burned writings that did not agree with him, and he appointed censors to make sure that government officials did their work. Number one, underline two examples that show Qin's rules were harsh. Number two, based on Chen's rule, do you think it helped to unite the country? Why or why not? And we're looking at the box there that I'm about to read for you for number two. So you can give your opinion, okay? Chen's effort to unite, to unify China. He created a single currency that everyone had to use. He hired experts to simplify and set rules for the Chinese writing system. He ordered farmers to build a canal connecting the Chang Yang River in central China to a city in southern China. He began to project he began a project to connect a series of walls across northern China to keep invaders out. When Qin died in 210 BC, aristocrats and farmers revolted. By 206 BC, the Qin dynasty was Number three, how would you describe Chin as a ruler? He was not nice. He was cruel. That was the word we used in our reading today, cruel. C-R-U-E-L. All right, Han rulers. In 202 BC, a new dynasty in China called the Han Dynasty came to power. The Han Dynasty would rule China for over 400 years. The first strong Han Emperor was Han Wudi. Han Wudi ruled from 4, 141 BC to 87 BC. 
He wanted dedicated. He wanted to dedicate. He he wanted dedicated. Uh, he wanted dedicated and talented people to work in the government. He created schools to prepare students for civil service jobs or government jobs given to people based on their scores on tests. That's pretty smart. Civil service tests were a way of choosing educated government workers. The tests of the Chinese civil service were very difficult. Some students who passed got jobs as teachers. <laughs> Others worked for the government. So if you scored high, you got to be a teacher. That's right. Respect. They won great respect because they were well educated. Boom. Number four, marking the text. Circle two jobs that someone could get after passing the civil service examination. Being a teacher. Or working for the government. There you go. On to page 127. During the Han Dynasty, many farmers became tenant farmers. A tenant farmer worked land that belongs to someone else. Most tenant farmers were very poor. As the population grew, the Han Empire took in new areas. Han armies conquered land to the north, including Korea, and moved, moved south into Southeast Asia. They went as west they went west as far as India. The Chinese lived peacefully for nearly 150 years. Sometimes my eyes read faster than my mouth can speak. So, does that happen to you ever? Like your, your mouth and your eyes and your brain just aren't connecting right? Number one, why did Han why did Han rulers create civil service examinations? So that's me back on page one twenty six with the teacher test. During this time, ideas, art, literature, and science blossomed. The ideas of Confucius influenced more people. New paintings and sculptures were created. Writers wrote about current events. They made copies of old work because they didn't have copy machines. They had to do all of like the copying by hand. So it was not easy. It took a lot of time to make like 10 copies of a book would take a long time to do. New technology helped Chinese farmers produce more food. The cast iron plow was developed. It could break up soil better than wooden plows. Water wheels ground more grain. Silk manufacturing improved. Paper, a Chinese invention, was used to help keep written records. The rudder and a new way to move ship sails allowed Chinese to travel farther. Doctors discovered that certain foods prevented disease. They learned to treat some illnesses with herbs. Chinese doctors believe relieved their patients' pain with acupuncture. Acupuncture is a practice of entering thin, short needles into a patient's skin at certain points to relieve pain. Number six, why did Han Wudi encourage trade with the West? We're about to read about that, okay? On the Silk Road. During the Han period, Chinese traders grew rich by delivering expensive goods to other parts of the world. Both sea and land routes led to an exchange of goods and ideas. In AD 139, that means um, like common era. Like in our stuff, it's like CE, it's like BCE before common era, and then it's common era. And then this book, AD, means after death, which is after the death of Jesus. So some historians measure time as before Jesus and some after Jesus. And then some people measure it by common era and, and like another event in history. So, at zero, it starts counting up and then and it goes backwards. So, it's like a number line, too. So, he, Han Wudi sent a general named Zhang Chine, because we know that the QI means ch, 
the Chan, the Zhang Chan, to explore west of China. Zhang's mission was to find allies to help China fight their enemies. He returned 13 years later. He had not found allies. However, he told people about the places he had been. He told Han Wudi about the strong horses in the west. Han Wudi wanted these horses for his soldiers. To get them, the emperor encouraged trade between China and the, the west. Chinese merchants traded silk, spices, and other luxury goods. This trade route to the West would later be called the Silk Road. The Silk Road was a network of trade routes. When it was completed, it stretched from China to the Mediterranean. Mesopotamia. Travel on the Silk Road was difficult and dangerous. Traders had to cross high mountains and vast deserts. Robbers and thieves also traveled the roads. Over the years, China came into contact with other civilizations. Chinese inventions such as paper traveled along the Silk Road to civilizations in the West. Number eight, what developments led to the creation of the Silk Road? You have to go back to 127, the bottom, and then at the top of 128, kind of look there. Buddhism reaches China. Remember Buddhism in India? Well, here we go. The Silk Road was served, also served as a way to spread ideas. Buddhism spread from India to China along the Silk Road. At first, Buddhism attracted few followers. However, the long period of unrest after the fall of the Han Dynasty helped the spread of Buddhism. Many of the Han emperors after Han Wudi were weak and dishonest. Greedy aristocrats took over more of the land. They forced many farmers to give up their property. Finally, people, be people rebelled against the Han rulers. In AD 190, rebels destroyed the Han capital city, Luoyang. By AD 220, just 30 years later, Civil war divided China. For the next 400 years, China was divided into many small kingdoms. The long years of civil war made the Chinese feel unsafe. Many turned to Buddhism. Buddhist ideas appealed to people dealing with fear and worry. By AD 400, Buddhism had become one of China's major religions. Now remember, in India, we had Hinduism and Buddhism and Jainism. And Hinduism really took hold. And then as Buddhism traveled to China, it took hold more so in China. And even today, more people practice Buddhism in China than they do in India, where it started with the Buddha, which means an enlightened one. So, number nine, why did the fall of the Han Dynasty help Buddhism spread to China? And last bit here, check for understanding, list two acts of Qin Xing Ongdi to unify China. List the two acts that Qin did to unify China. And then name one way in which life for farmers worsened during the Han Dynasty and one way that it improved. We have been doing so good on our DBQ. Let's keep that up. Um, remember, 117 through 128 is due tomorrow. I'm gonna tear it out, turn it in, because I need to make sure we're doing this. And uh, your bonus tonight will be to draw me um, just draw me a picture on the bottom of 128. Just that little area right here you can just draw me some flowers um heart your favorite just whatever you like to draw just doodle down there okay or draw me a smiley face or just i don't know something okay and yeah that's it thanks for coming and i apologize for yesterday's video being so late um there were issues with my technology so i'm sorry i hope this one will be up within 
by 6 p.m. at the latest tonight. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.